Welcome to part four of turning this into this. If you want to start back at part one, click here or find the link in the description. We left off with me sanding 47 years of furniture polish off of a lid I had no intent of refinishing in the first place. And that is exactly why you do not use Lemon Pledge. Do not walk on that bot. <laughs> Troublemaker, this one. Likes to get in the middle of everything. I let the final layer of polyurethane polyurethane dry for 24 hours, then carefully remove the tape. I'm happy to report it didn't pull any of the black paint off. I do have some final touch-ups to do, but I was waiting for those until absolutely everything else was done. Before I clean up the tarp, I polish up the petals with Noxon Metal Polish. I'm happy to say they shined up like new. Back downstairs, the lid is ready for a layer of polyurethane. The lid won't be violently attacked the way the bottom of the piano will be. Kumbadi! 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 so I may only give it one or two coats. Here comes layer number three on the face panel. I'm attempting to apply the paint a little heavier in areas where I can still see inconsistencies. It's very subtle, but my triple Virgo eye will see it every time, so I have to at least try. After every coat of paint, after every coat of stain, after every everything, is me washing my brushes. How many times did I wash brushes? I lost count. Sometimes I washed brushes three times a day, every day for almost four months. The uh, lid of the piano is done. The face panel needs to dry for a week. I'm still not a thousand percent thrilled with it. It's just kind of a wait and see at this point. I can't really do much until it sets for a while anyway, so still thinking her way through it. In the meantime, I'm going to work on my stencil tests. To replace the ugly scroll work, my idea was to do a black on black stencil using Black 3.0. Black 3.0. Is a matte paint, while the piano paint is a satin finish, and I thought the contrast could be cool. My concern is that nice person at the paint store did such a good job of making a true black for me that you might not even be able to see the stencil. I am not experienced at stencils, so found the best glue and brushes and decided to give it a shot. I sprayed the back of the stencil with glue and let it set a while to get tacky. In the meantime, I prepped the black 3.0 and the brushes. Once the stencil was sticky, I placed it on the test board and added the paint, then peeled the stencil off when I was done. Trial number one, the stencil brushes suck. I tried to fix it with a separate brush. It was too much paint. It bled through. Obviously we can see the stencil pretty clearly right now while the paint is wet. Good times. A few hours later after the paint was dry, I was pretty surprised by the results. The guy at the paint store did such a good job of getting the black for the piano, like the blackest he could possibly get it, that if the light doesn't hit it right, it's not even there. It just vanishes and then sort of appears, which is cool, except the amount of work that it's gonna take for me to get that stencil on there and nail it on the first try. If I'm not gonna see it like all the time, I don't know if I really wanna put the effort in. I had to sit with that for a few hours but finally decided to scrap the stencil idea and come up with a new plan. As I still want to stick with a Victorian Gothic look, I decided using wooden appliques were probably the next best option. After scouring the internet, I found these. They are made by pressing sawdust mixed with glue into a mold, so they are rough and very much need sanding. But they are also thin enough that they won't get in the way of music books. This one came cracked, so I'll have to fix that. I like the way they look, so yes, let's go forward with this plan. I use wood glue and painter's tape to fix the cracked applique. I am using black 3.0 on these. I opted not to use primer as I really want the wood to absorb the paint, which it absolutely does. Even after sanding, the wood is still pretty rough, so I'm using old paint brushes that I'll just throw out when I'm finished with this project. They don't paint up quickly, but I wasn't expecting them to. This is the black 3.0. See how it just absorbs all of the light? It looks like it's velvet, which I flip and love. A few days later, I touch up all of the spots still showing through the black, then pull out my rub and buff to add some antiqued depth back to the pieces. You may recall me using this combination of black 3.0 and, and rub and buff in my cherub shelf video. This is actually the very first time I've used this combination. Rub and buff is wax mixed with paint. You rub it on with your finger to bring out the texture of objects. On these appliques, the areas my fingers won't reach, I use a pencil tip eraser or a long cocktail toothpick. If I overdo it, I use a damp cotton swab to dull the gold. I have to say, they turned out even better than I was picturing in my head. 
I am pleased to say that after allowing the face panel to cure, it looks great. The strategic paint layering has hidden all the flaws I could see, so today we are going forward with gluing on the appliques. I'm using a white fabric pencil to mark the location. I did try the pencil on my test panel to make sure that it wipes off first. I'm applying wood glue to the back of each piece, allowing it to tack, then setting it in place. I wanted to use clamps, but they don't reach in far enough, so I had to revert back to the old stack books on it method. 24 hours later, I removed the books and they are perfect. No wiggles, no leaked glue. I couldn't have asked for a better result. So I can screw the layer back onto the face panel and then that piece is officially done. Like it's done. What? The only thing left on the body of the piano was to do the final black paint touch-ups. I went over the whole thing with a microscopic eye using a super tiny brush. Is my perfectionism showing? January 5th, I measured and placed the appliques on the foot panel as it was finally done curing. I had to do it twice as I didn't like how they looked the first time. The measuring is my least favorite part. I prepped the glue in the books, but only as I was applying the left hand applique did I realize that it wasn't actually flat. It bows slightly up. I'm so mad at myself that I didn't realize that before I painted it and could have fixed it by getting it damp and pressing it flat. In my irritation, I apply too much glue. <sighs> then have to use a wet paintbrush to try and remove as much of the glue seeping out as I can. I'm more careful with the right applique, and that one goes on without incident. 24 hours later, I remove the books, and we are mostly good. The left applique didn't dry entirely flat. The very top of it isn't resting on the panel by a barely noticeable amount. The only thing I can do about it is wedge a little piece of black felt under it so it won't hook on anything. I don't want to attempt to glue it down again because I could just crack the applique. So, oops. But otherwise, it looks outstanding. And that's where we'll leave it. One episode to go. Subscribe.